everybody, welcome back. We're working on my training assistant app uh, using App Inventor. And uh, what we're gonna do is I wanna make it so, I wanna show you how I made it so this add a new entry button goes to a page. You're gonna see we have the add a new workout. We have a date picker over here. This is called a spinner. And I'll go over that in a moment. And then these are time pickers. So if you click it, you'll see you have hours and minutes, okay? So what I wanna show you is how we do this. Now notice there's some feedback here, right? You got, uh, you can see that there's gonna be something there, but there's nothing yet, and that's in the date format. When we go to choose a date, if we select a date and click okay, you'll see now that that updates. And then um, you can see that we can change what the workout type is. And then we have a start and stop time, and this gets really interesting. If you click start, for example, you can do the start time, and it gives you the start time, but we don't have the stop time yet. So we have to actually click that, and then of course, let's just say it's later. That would make the most sense. And you'll see that now we're using a 24 hour timer on there. And so these two buttons are separate from each other. You have a start and a stop time. So we have to sort of work together our information here. And um, I initially did one label there, and I'll show you how I took one label and adjusted it. Um, and so let's go ahead and, and do that on here and I'll also show you how I upload and test stuff out as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go to full screen on here. Uh, first thing I wanna show you is this is the button. The new entry button is the one that we're using to go to the other screen. So let me show you how I did that. Once you add a button in, what you're gonna do is go up to blocks and this is where you do your programming and I had the when new entry button is clicked, open another screen with the screen name of what the other screen is, okay? So that's the new entry screen. So I had to add that and name it, okay? So how did I get the when a new entry button was clicked? Well, I did it by looking for the button. So here it is, new entry label. And then once I click it, I see all these options I have available here. Oh, sorry, that's the label, excuse me. There's the button. I, was, I knew there was, we were missing something. And notice it's the top one, it's just when it's clicked, okay? Now, you'll notice there's a drop down here, and the reason why is because there are multiple buttons. However, the click, you, there is no drop down, you can't change that one. So if you click a button, these are all of the events that go with a button. Click, got focus, long click, that means you're holding it down for a little bit longer than just a single click. This is good if you like are, you, that maybe people are complaining it's real too, too easy to actually accidentally click. Uh, you're brushing, you're getting near it, and it kind of does that. You might want to add that. Um, and then the last focus is whether you're, you're, you're hovering over it or not. You have a touch down, that means the moment you begin to touch it, and then the touch up is it doesn't trigger anything until you let go. And then you'll notice there are a series of things related to the button. So these where it begins with a block, uh, a little, little click there to click something in, um, will tell you we can actually get information from a button. So we can find out what the background color is. We can actually capture that. We can capture whether it's enabled or disabled, whether uh, the font is bold or not. We can get a lot of information. We can even grab the text off of a button by doing that. I just wanted to show you some of the options you have on a button. However, all we really needed is the, when a button is clicked, go to another screen. Now, let me walk you through, how did I get go to another screen? Well, that took me a little bit of digging because there, I, the first thing I went to is I went to control and I wanted to see if there was something here. There is open another screen. It was actually under control. Let's see if I click on screen, do we have that in there? No. Okay, so I actually had to go to control and it was open another screen with the screen name. And so I just dragged that out and I dropped it in. And then I needed text, that's under text. And the top of the text is this one here. You just click it in and then you write the name of the screen you wanna to go to. So let's say I wanna to go to the settings button and then I'll, maybe that's in a screen called settings screen. I can add that. 
However, this is a problem. We don't want to add this yet because I don't have that screen. So I'm actually going to right click and I'm going to disable the block. So when I add the screen, I can enable it later. So that's kind of a cool little feature. And you can do this for your other button as well. You can actually even duplicate that one. And you can click on here and you can do the stats button. And they're all disabled, right? So except for this one because we actually have the screen. So at this point, what I want to do is talk to you about the next screen. So we're actually going to go to screen one. I'm actually going to go back to designer, not screen one. I'm going to go to designer, and I'm going to go to new entry screen. So what we did here is we added a lot of components. I'm just going to kind of collapse some of these so you can see the order in which they appear. So everything is in the new entry screen. It's tabbed over, and everything is in, is, um, Everything is inside of a vertical arrangement. Now, before I even click it, let me just show you what I did. I did an align horizontal of center, so it would center items. And then I aligned it vertically on the top because I want to make sure it's not hidden. Sometimes items are too tall and you don't see them right away. In my vertical arrangement, I did fill parent and, uh, on the width and on the height. And I also, just in case, did a align horizontal center, so that would center everything in the middle of the screen. I could have left hand aligned it if I wanted, but I just kept it that way. Align vertical, same thing. Did not change the background color. Everything else is just, it's pretty much all default except for the align horizontal. And of course the height and width. So let's start working our way down. So then we put a title label. I've already covered how to do that. I showed you how to do horizontal arrangements. Just note that I centered everything vertically and horizontally. And I did just an automatic height and width. I didn't change that at all. Okay. Did this, and, and then inside, I actually had three items. I had a label, and then a date picker, and then another label. So the date picker is uh, up towards the top. It's right after the checkbox. Date picker, that's where you're picking a day, a month, and a year. And it's a nice little widget. You don't have to program, so that's really handy. Uh, you'll notice I gave everything names to make sure that it was clear as to what it was as well as what its purpose. So we have date entry, workout entry, date picker. I could have called it date entry, date picker. That might have worked. I have date selected label. Now, date selected label. Actually, before I do that, let me also show you um, on the workout entry date picker, I want to point out that um, I set everything, the width is all default. I added choose a date to the text. Okay. So once you choose a date, we're good. And you can always edit it again, so that's why I left it there. Um, date, I could have put it above. I decided to put it next to it. This might actually no longer be necessary. And so I can actually click on here and I can delete it. It's actually not going to hurt anything. So I think that's better because it already says choose a date. And I did it on the title down there. So we're just cleaning it up. And um, other than that, I don't think there's anything. Oh, shape. This is something you can do. So there's a default shape. There is rounded, rectangular, and oval. I don't recommend you do oval. Um, we'll just do it as default. And we're just going to leave it like that. Then we have the horizontal arrangement. And inside of there, we have a label. So workout type, and then we have a workout type spinner. Uh, I'm going to make that bold, workout type, because I think that's worth making bold. And then the spinner is an interesting one. The spinner is over here. You already saw that it was a drop down. And so what you do is you drag it out. You put it where you want it. And then um, you have this thing that says elements from string. So what I do is I just type out all of my choices, and they're separated with a comma. So then that's why you saw running, then hiking, then walking, etc. If you come up with other ones, you just add them into this list. Okay, and then prompt, I just said select your workout, and let's see if that actually is showing. So I'm gonna go back a step. I'm gonna click add a new entry. Let me show you on the screen. Uh, workout type, it looks like I've already selected it. Oh, there it is, right at the top, select your workout. Okay, so there we go. So that's actually a good thing. I would add a prompt if you have it. I'm not sure what selection does. 
Let me just try walking and see if that changes anything. So now that I've tested something, I want to just test this out for a moment. So I'm going to load it up. So at this point, I'm going to build it. So I'm going to click Save APK to my computer, and I'm going to try installing it and seeing how that works. In another tutorial, um, I showed how to install it. So if you haven't seen that, you might want to watch it. However, in this case, I'm not going to bother you with showing you how I install it. I'm just going to do it, and then I'll show you what happens when we change selection and we actually write something in there. It may, it may do what I think it's going to do. It might not. I'm going to find out. Okay, let's try it out. I'm going to click Add a New Entry, and uh, oh, yeah, there it is. Notice, walking is already selected. Now, this is an important piece. Check this out. This is why it's important, okay, guys? At some point, at some point, you might add your screen. Let's go back to screen one, and as you may recall, we have a button that's edit user info. You could have the user select their default workout type, and then from there, what you do is you can programmatically actually tell it what the selection is based on what they store. Now that's for a different time. But for now, just note, whatever goes into selection is going to be whatever the default one it shows. So if you want to set a default or you want the user to set a default, you can do it in there. Or you can leave it blank and then it'll just be whatever that is. Okay? So that's how the spinner works. Then we added a label for start and stop time. And when I did it, I created another label at the bottom that had start and stop label. And I have decided later on that that created more work. And so I'm going to do a change to it in a moment. But let's see how much time. All right, I have just enough time to explain what I did um, and why. And then maybe if there's time, I'll show you what I'm going to do to fix it. So first of all, I wasn't thinking straight. I forgot that when we want to update, we had one label for both start and stop time, but we had two separate buttons, one that says start time picker and one that says stop time picker. Okay. Um, they have, they're enabled. That was default. In fact, I think pretty much everything was default. The only thing I changed was the text that was on each one, start time, stop time. Okay? And it's pretty obvious it's a button. That's what you're going to do. And and then we can just go from there. Text alignment, we set them to center. So those are both there. And then we have a label at the bottom that we wrote start time, stop time. Now, a couple things. I added a color of gray to that label as well as this label up here. They both have a color of gray. And I wanted to do that so you could see that it was there, but the gray is sort of indicating that it has not been filled out yet. So we want to give the user a little bit of info to say, yeah, now it's completed. Okay, so that's why I did it. So now let's look at the code. Now there's a lot of code in here you're about to see. So don't get overwhelmed. Yeah, I told you there was a lot. Okay, so let's just do full screen. Oh, that was full screen. Uh, let me just zoom out of this a little bit so you can kind of see everything. Or let's just take a look at one at a time. There we go. All right, remember we had a start time and a stop time. And I realized, here's the thing. Actually, let's just, let's just get that out of the way. Let's just focus on the workout entry date picker. Okay, and we'll get this out of the way. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, all this stuff here, I just want out of your way. And let's just zoom in on this. Okay. So what I had to do is I had to figure out the date picker. So I selected it here, and I saw this after date set okay so that's what i wanted to do after we've already set the date there's no point in doing anything until it's been set so then we have this label so i just literally went to the label and i saw this set whatever label dot whatever to whatever so i just dragged that out and then i changed background color to text and then i wanted to add some text now this became complicated because one of the things is on your date picker, let's go ahead and click it and we'll scroll down a little bit. Okay. On the date picker, you'll see that you have workout 
entry date picker and you can just drag it out. So I just click that on there and I look to see what do we have and um, we have basically day, month, year. There was month and text, right? And that's it, okay? So there's no like gives you all the information you want. Plus I wanted to format it using slashes. So at that point I realized, okay, this is not enough. I can't just do one thing here. I need to combine a lot of information. And for that, I had to go to join because I wanted to join some text together. So I just kind of pulled that out on the side and let me just move this stuff down a little bit further. So I got a nice clear area here and I want to go to join. It's part of text. So I click on text and I'm looking for the one that says join. And there it is. I clicked that in and right away it gives you two options. I know I wanted the month, then a slash, then a day, then a slash, then a year. So that was five items in all. So what I did is I went ahead and uh, I'll just go ahead. I think I, the first time I just clicked that and I chose, uh, I wanted to do the month, right? Um, so I was gonna show the month first, then I was gonna do a slash. So I went to text and I grabbed the top one here and I put a slash. And then I realized, okay, well, now what do I do? I need to add some more. And join only gives me two. Well, that's what this here is for. It's the little, little editor. So I clicked on the editor and I just grabbed string and I joined it and I knew that was gonna be the day, this was gonna be the slash, and this was gonna be the year. So once I had all those in, I had all the pieces I needed. I didn't need to go back here, because watch, I could just click on here, duplicate it, drag it, drop it, change it to day, and then I could duplicate this, and then just drop it in, and then I could duplicate this again, and drop it in and change it to year, and there you have it. I've got all of that working. And then I just dropped it in, and the last thing I had to do was set the date selected labels color. So I actually just literally, uh, well, I think at this point I had to just go back and grab it. So I clicked any old label. I dragged it out. Oh, this wasn't set date label. So I'm going to change that one. So I'll just go ahead and grab it and it was set. Okay. So then I dragged that, dropped it in and the label, instead of height, it was text color. And then I needed a color. There's colors. So I dragged it out, grabbed flag. And there we go. Okay, so that's how I built all that together. And that's what I did. Okay. So basically, we sort of run out of time. So I think I'll wait for my next video tutorial to walk you through how to do uh, the start and stop times and how I initially solved it and then how I'm going to fix it. But the nice thing is it forced me to do some variables. So in the next tutorial, we'll talk about variables. I'll talk about how to do a start and stop time. And if there's time, sorry, I had to do it. But if there's time enough in the video, I'll even show you how to calculate how much time has expired, even though you got hours and minutes. So stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm.